Okay, we are continuing our coverage here of smaller, lesser known semiconductor stocks. Today we have another one that we have begun nibbling on. We have a very small position in it. That is microchip technology, ticker symbol MCHP. And like the last video we did on Onto Innovation, uh, Casey had a little conversation with Google's Bard to get a bear thesis and and a bull thesis for microchip. Take it away. Yeah, I feel like Bart and I are getting to know each other very well these days. So we'll uh, go ahead and continue here with the bear thesis for microchip. So the first one is microchip is a mature company with a slow growing business. What do you think about that, Nick? Before continuing, let me remind you to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if this video is helpful as you do your own investment research and increase your knowledge of business and technology. We really appreciate the support as subscribing to the channel helps us continue putting out content like this. Okay, yes, and also no. Let's go to the, let's go to the handy dandy semiconductor industry flowchart. Uh, Microchip is an interesting company. It is an IDM, Integrated Device Manufacturer. It both designs and manufactures chips. Uh, it handles most of its manufacturing. It outsources a little bit of it. So an IDM is maybe the most famous one is Intel, of course. Uh, big giant IDM and has been for many decades. Another one is Texas Instruments, um, analog devices, also an IDM. Actually, we could maybe compare microchip up with up against Texas Instruments and analog devices. But at any rate, yes, specifically what it does, it's it's older older technology. So not the fastest growing business out there, but that point de deserves an asterisk. Yes, microchips products are used in all kinds of stuff, all kinds of applications, uh, automotive, consumer electronics, industrial, medical, a lot of things here. So wide ranging product line from microchip. Uh, as you mentioned, it faces competition from other semiconductor companies. And Bard says it faces competition from Intel and Qualcomm, as well as what you mentioned, Texas Instruments and uh, analog devices. What do you think about the competition about from Intel and Qualcomm? <sighs> I, I take a little bit of issue with that one. I actually would, I would draw a closer comparison uh, with Texas Instruments and with analog devices than I would Intel and Qualcomm. So basically what microchip specializes in are microcontrollers um, or an MCU, not the Marvel Cinematic Universe. MCU is a um, microcontrol unit. You can basically think of this as like our PCs or our smartphones. A microcontroller has a processor. It has some embedded memory. It has interconnects. It has connections uh, to peripherals, so think like a button or a display. But the key difference is a microcontroller is just like it sounds. It's it's miniature. Um, so whereas like maybe say our PCs are designed to multitask a lot of different things, a microcontroller does typically one task. Uh, that's why it has the embedded memory in it. It, it kind of has the the small little program embedded in it for that processor. Um, and so that's why its focus is more squarely on industrial and automotive, which you have some nice charts here from their presentation on that. So I think this is actually a pretty unique business. Uh, this is not a space that, that Qualcomm or Intel dabble in that heavily. And even, even Texas instruments and analog devices, they're actually about three quarters of their business geared towards analog chips, so chips that interact with, uh, it could be an electrical current or a radio signal or some sort of sensor on a car. Uh, it's actually flip-flopped for microchip. Three quarters of its business is microcontrollers and the remainder is analog devices. So I think, I think there is some competition, yes, but I don't think that is a 
key risk for this particular business. Okay, and this company, Microchip, also provides silicon carbide chips. Is that is that right? Uh, they do. Silicon carbide, SIC, is an emerging growth industry. Uh, there are a lot of companies that are getting into silicon carbide. Uh, so this would fall under Microchip's analog chip portfolio. The silicon carbide um, MOSFETs that they, they make would fall under, under that category. So that does bring them into a little bit of competition with companies like OnSemi, WolfSpeed, ST Micro, and, and such. So a little tiny, small exposure there to silicon carbide. That is true. Okay. So we talked a little bit about all the competitors that Microchip has, which really leads us to our next point here about the semiconductor shortage that's expected to impact Microchip and all of these other companies as well. And the company's margins are under pressure because of rising costs. But on one hand, I did see in their presentation the term soft landing, which I think has become popular lately with the Federal Reserve. And apparently Microchip is also using this, this term soft landing. So tell me a little bit more about what, what this means going forward. Ooh, Google Bard. Uh, this is interesting. It shows uh, the limitations, I think, of these generative AI systems here, because uh, in many ways, the chip shortage is, is actually over. Not in all ways. Obviously, for the automotive industry in particular, they're still dealing with some of this. But it, at any rate, Microchip has already been managing the chip shortage quite well. They have a significant backlog of orders from their customers, and that's why they think they can manage a soft landing. Um, not if, but when there is a bit of a cyclical downturn in their end markets. So again, primarily industries, um, industrial manufacturing, automotive is a key market for them as well, uh, a little data center uh, exposure. When there is a cyclical downturn for microchip because of this very large back order. They think that that back order will kind of help them bridge the gap from the beginning of their downturn to the end of it. That remains to be seen, but yes, they're using the term soft landing. Okay, excellent coverage there. I think so the term soft landing is going to be forever embedded in our minds. So let's move on to the bull thesis here. Microchip is a well-managed company with a strong record of profitability. So there is some really great slides that illustrate this from a recent investor day here uh, on how Microchip has managed these cyclical downturns within the semiconductor industry. Like maybe you can explain explain some of these these charts for us. Yeah, these are these are a good find that you pulled up here. The first one we'll just show here is the company just shows the cycles of the semiconductor industry, the ups, the ups and downs over the last decade and a half. They they pull data back to 2007, uh, showing year over year sales growth of the semiconductor industry overall. Uh, next slide here from that presentation, you can see their adjusted gross margin targets. So despite that industry cyclicality, pretty consistent gross margin on their product sold. And then the final slide here, uh, their adjusted operating margins. Again, uh, pretty stable despite the ups and downs of the industry. And interestingly enough, uh, this company remains very, very profitable, profitable even in a down year. Uh, most of these years, they're still putting up adjusted operating margins of well over 30%. Um, and then, uh, of, of course, here in 2022, uh, almost 47% adjusted operating margin. That's probably a bit above what management thinks they will be able to do over the long term. But actually, interestingly, not by much. Okay, very good. Let's uh, move on to our next point here. Microchip is benefiting from the growth of the Internet of Things. We hate buzzwords like Internet of Things, don't we? IoT. Uh, so 
this is actually a key differentiator for microchip. So all sorts of devices across lots of different industries are making use of semiconductor technology, basically embedding small little computers into their equipment, hooking them up to the internet, and they need microcontrollers to do that. Uh, a lot of them getting those microcontrollers from microchip. And the reason why microchip is well positioned to benefit from the internet of things is they like to talk about the fact that they're a systems designer. So a lot of these customers that are adopting IoT devices, they're not technology companies. They have no know-how in the semiconductor field. They're not software developers. And so Microchip uh, will make custom chip designs for what their customer needs, and then also write the software program to control that chip as well. So that basically you end up with a whole system that's ready to go, designed for you by Microchip, you just plug it in to the device, whatever that might be. Uh, maybe it's a piece of uh, manufacturing equipment. Maybe it's um, um, a company's, like let's say a hospital's uh, on-site, on-prem data center, uh, whatever whatever the case may be. Um, that whole system design is a key differentiator for the company, uh, as a lot of businesses with a non-tech background really need to go out and find suppliers that can help them become essentially a tech company as well. You're right. Even though we hate buzzwords like Internet of Things, it's a strong driver in the semiconductor industry, right? Let's talk about financials. There's a couple great slides here about the outlook for the next year. Maybe we can talk about where they're at right now, what the outlook is for the upcoming year, and where you see things headed for this company. Okay, so the company did provide some guidance for their fiscal fourth quarter of 2023. It's actually the three months ended March 2023, a 2.5% two quarter over quarter growth, uh, which equates to 20 to 21% year over year growth, revenue growth. Again, super high operating margins, highly profitable business, really completely bucking the, the semiconductor industry downturn right now. And at a more recent conference after that, we've got a second slide here where management said basically for the next quarter, that's going to be Q1 fiscal 2024. That's the three months that will end in June of 2023. They expect similar quarter over quarter revenue growth. Again, for the three months ended in June, which that's going to roughly equate to about 16% year over year growth um, for, for the spring, basically the spring 2023 quarter. So microchip, slowing down a bit, but certainly still in high growth mode right now, highly profitable. Uh, again, just to reiterate, I think one actual bear case to be made here is that eventually the chip downturn will probably come for microchip and this growth will flatline, maybe even dip into negative year over year territory a little bit at some point. That's my expectation uh, for maybe within the next year or so. But long-term, the company still thinks it can grow at an average of about 10 to 15% a year. And I think that's that's a pretty reasonable expectation, I think, for over the next three to five years for this company to average, let's, let's say 10% to 12% average revenue growth. What do you think fair value for this stock is? Okay, so I think the stock is very reasonably priced right at the moment, especially if you're looking at free cash flow. So free cash flow per share at $5.66 over the last 12 months. I'm expecting a very conservative rate here, but I think I think free cash flow per share can grow about 10% a year for the next three years and then factoring for 5% annual growth after that discount rate of 11%, um, just very kind of rough, simple numbers here. And that gets us to a fair value of well over a hundred bucks to 110 bucks a share 
uh, currently, as we're recording this, uh, microchip at what is it, 80, 80 bucks? Yeah, 81, 81 bucks a share. Um, again, I, I think there's going to be some bumpiness probably in the next year. I think, you know, the soft landing is, is going to come for microchip. But over the next three to five years, I think I think 10% free cash flow per share growth is a reasonable expectation, which makes this stock a pretty compelling value, especially if, if you like the automation of, of industrial processes and manufacturing and automotive tech and all that good stuff that we might lump into the IoT, the IoT secular growth trend moniker. Okay, you've certainly made a great case for microchip. Bard also agrees. It says the global semiconductor shortage is expected to ease, which we all know, and that'll benefit microchip's business in the long term. So this is another small semiconductor company that we're starting to nibble on here at Chipstock Investor.